This video lecture is about the production of monoclonal antibodies by Hybridoma technology. We know that in response to an antigen our immune system produces a heterogeneous mixture of antibodies. These antibodies are of different specificities. And they recognize different epitopes on the same antigen. The antibodies derived from the multiple clone cells are known as polyclonal antibodies. Polyclonal antibodies represent a collection of antibodies from different B cells that recognize multiple epitopes on the same antigen. Today we talk about monoclonal antibody. Monoclonal antibody preparations contain only one type of antibody derived from a single cloned B cell. So these antibodies will recognize and bind only one particular epitope on an antigen. We can also say that monoclonal antibodies are identical antibodies with same specificity. Milstein and Kohler described the first technique developed for stable monoclonal antibody production in 1975. This technique is known as hybridoma technology. They were jointly awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1984. Hybridoma technology is used for the production of large number of monoclonal antibodies against a particular antigen. And these monoclonal antibodies are used for the different purposes for example in the treatment of cancer. Let's study in detail the technique of monoclonal antibody production. First step in production of monoclonal antibodies is the immunization of an animal, usually the animal used as the mouse. Mouse is immunized with the antigen against which we need antibodies. Let's say this is our antigen and it has four different epitopes. Mouse is injected with the antigen several times. As a result, mouse B lymphocytes are stimulated against the epitopes or antigenic determinants of the injected antigen. After several weeks, when these B lymphocytes reach to an optimal amount, the mouse is sacrificed, spleen of mouse is removed aseptically. It is known to us that spleen is the secondary lymphoid organ and we can easily harvest activated B lymphocytes from spleen. And then we have activated B cells which are capable of producing antibodies against the specific epitope present on the antigen. Activated B cells produce the antibodies of interest but cannot replicate in culture. The second step is cell fusion. In the step activated B lymphocytes are fused with myeloma cells. The rationale behind fusing these two cell types together is that spleen cells produce the antibodies of interest but cannot replicate in culture. Thus it is difficult to harvest antibodies from them. Myelomas, on the other hand, do not produce antibodies but do replicate in culture quite easily. Hybridomas take advantage of the properties of both cell types to mass produce antibodies of interest. As a result of cell fusion, we will have five types of cells. Unfused B cells and fused B cells, unfused myelomas and fused myelomas cells, and hybrid cells formed by fusion of an activated B cell and in myeloma cell. These hybrid cells are also known as hybridomas. In our illustration we have four types of activated B cells each specific to one of the four epitopes on the antigen, so hybrid cells will also be of four types now. Our next aim is to select these hybridomas from this mixture of cells. Selection of hybridomas from the mixture can be accomplished through the use of media containing hypoxanthin, aminopterin, and thymidine, HAT. In order to understand the rationale behind this approach, it is important to note that mammalian cells can synthesize nucleotides using two different pathways, the de novo and salvage pathways. Under normal conditions, mammalian cells will use the de novo pathway to replicate. But de novo pathway is blocked by aminopterin. When the de novo pathway is blocked, Cells will then utilize the salvage pathway as an alternative means to replicate, but this will only happen if hypoxanthin and thymidine are present. The key to this approach is to use myeloma cells that are deficient in an enzyme called HGPRT, which is required for the salvage pathway. In this scenario, 
unfused myeloma cells that are deficient in an enzyme called HGPRT. Myelomas are unable to replicate because the de novo pathway is blocked by aminopterin and the salvage pathway is blocked by a deficiency in HGPRT. Fused and unfused B cells died within few days because of their short lifespan, they are not able to divide indefinitely in cell culture, fused and unfused myeloma cells also die. This is because de novo pathway is blocked by aminopterin and the salvage pathway is blocked by a deficiency in HGPRT. Hybrid cells almost survived in hat medium, these hybrid cells are able to synthesize nucleotide by the salvage pathway. The functional HGPRT enzyme is contributed by the activated B cell partner. And these cells are able to divide indefinitely. Our aim is to select and propagate single antibody producing hybrid cell. We need to isolate these hybridomas and grow them individually. Therefore next step is the isolation of hybridomas of single specificity. This is done by a method known as limiting dilution. In this method, the cells or hybridomas are distributed in multi-well culture plates at very low density. This is done such that on an average each will contain a single cell. In the next step, these hybridomas are screened for the secretion of the antibody of desired specificity. This screening is done mostly by two techniques namely ELISA and RIA. Once the hybridoma cells producing the desired antibody are identified, they are isolated and cloned. In the next step, we have separate clones of activated B cells each producing antibodies of a single specificity. In each case, the antibodies produced are known as monoclonal antibodies. In the final step, these hybridomas and monoclonal antibodies are characterized and stored. Mostly they are stored in liquid nitrogen. Now these monoclonal antibodies are ready to use in treating and diagnosing diseases. For more information please visit creativediagnostics.com. Thank you.